Okay, we're back live at VMworld 2012. This is SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv's exclusive continuous coverage of VMworld 2012 in San Francisco. This is day two, uh, almost through second half of the day. Uh, a lot of great stuff happening here. I'm going to bring that to you live from theCUBE, our flagship telecast. When we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with a uh, good friend, longtime CUBE guest, David Scott, who is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of HP Storage, former CEO of 3PAR. David, welcome back. Great to be here. So you know, it was two years ago, literally to the day, that we were up here speculating about you know, who was going to win the bidding war. Was it Dell, was it HP? Obviously that's kind of you know, recent history, maybe not ancient history, but since then, 3PAR uh, has like just history. skyrocketed, right? I mean, at the time you were a $200 million company. I know you can't tell me this, I've said you know, we're tracking towards 600 million, maybe even more. Got to, got to get to a billion, and it's really the, the story of HP Storage. Well, it, it really is. I mean, we uh, just came off in another quarter where we uh, posted uh, greater than 60% growth for uh, 3PAR, uh, and that's been on top of a lot of 100% year-on-year quarter growth, quarter over quarter, year over year growth. So we're really, uh, really pleased. We're really being able to leverage the, uh, the channel uh, and the breadth of distribution uh, of HP, and. Uh, uh, we continue to, continue to build momentum, and uh, uh, that business is, uh, is really coming on very strongly in the high end now. We're clearly taking market share in that high end uh, of the, uh, the SAM business, and uh, uh, we want it to continue. But it's not the only story, because uh, our store wants uh, technology for deduplication and backup is also growing at a real clip, uh, more than 30% year over year. So we're really pleased with Yeah, that. so actually the three-part growth is slowing quite dramatically. It's down to 60%. <laughs> it's the law of big numbers, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> it is, especially when three-part has now become our biggest product line. Yeah. It is the biggest storage array product line. You know, what's line interesting in is that years ago, companies would buy you know, a storage asset. I mean, take, take about, think about when EMC bought you know, Data General and Clarion. It took a long, long, long time for them to figure that out. And then you've seen you know, Dell make acquisitions, obviously HP, EMC, and others. And it's, it's the, the industry is getting much better at integrating these acquisitions and just exploding them. You never could have done this as 3PAR on your own, right? I, I agree, and, and uh, I, I think the uh, uh, smarts around execution integration uh, are becoming more and more well adapted over time. Uh, and you can certainly see it with the integration of, of 3PAR. Yeah, so, um, so we're here at, uh, at VMworld. What do, you, what do you think, what's going on? What do you, what do you make of uh, the VMware mojo? And, and what's HP's point of view on all that? You know, it's tremendous momentum. I, I mean, HP uh, is such an integral part of kind of the overall VMware e ecosystem. I think kind of 42% of all VMware deployments on our HP server platforms. You know, obviously technologies like uh, 3PAR are the back-end uh, data storage, in many cases offering tremendous uh, kind of performance, enabling people to kind of double their virtual machine density. Uh, we have other products like our left-hand store virtual uh, technology designed for small to medium businesses and uh, remote offices and branch offices, which are also really tightly integrated. And in fact, uh, the whole area of uh, virtual storage appliances, if you, if you like, uh, software defined storage yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is really taking off here at the show as far as I can You know, the, one of the, every cube I love to walk away and I always learn something every time we do an event, but the epiphany I had th on this trip yesterday was, uh, and you mentioned, uh, you guys had three mentions on the earnings call prior on, about your success within HP, and uh, some of the other interviews, it's very clear that the storage equation, and we called this two years ago, Dave and I, when storage is sexy back, you guys saw that front end of that wave, is still exploding. So the, Dave and I have been introducing this concept called data infrastructure, not converged infrastructure, data infrastructure, with the focus that data is now the centerpiece of the value proposition. Everyone we're talking to is all validating that st the storage component is now front and center of the architecture, not necessarily changing converged infrastructure, just leading it. So software-defined networking points to that, uh, big data analytics that's being powered by these platforms. So I'd like to get your take on that, because I know you guys have led in converged infrastructure at HP, um, you organized around it, but now with storage exploding, you guys seem to be growing. It's just, not just you, IBM's the same way. There's storage yeah. groups out on the side, they're realizing we got to do something with this, so they're trying to make some moves. You got in, you know, new startups popping out like Fusion IO. So storage is at the center. So we're trying to define this data infrastructure. What's your take on that? Well, well I think that's an accurate representation. I mean, if you, if you look back 20 years, 
um, storage was always viewed as a peripheral to the, the server world. But you know, those of us in storage for that length of time really knew it was exactly the yeah, reverse. You were biased, in, in the of course. Right you know, it was almost like Galileo saying, <laughs> you know, does the Earth go around the sun or the sun go around the Earth? But, um, but uh, you know, fundamentally, I, I think there's a, a huge amount of truth to, to what you, say, you uh, state. Uh, data infrastructure is really predicated on the sophistication of the storage infrastructure. And there's a, a lot of evolution going on there. Not only how do I handle these kind of three big trends, you know, the, um, the development of IT as a service, whether it's private or public clouds. How do I hand the massive, massive explosion in unstructured information driven by kind of increasing human information, extreme data sets? Or how do I move to kind of hardware agnostic based storage services in the form of virtual storage appliances? All those three trends you know, combined to support. Uh, yeah, another another, another buzzword. Another buzzword on top of that that we're hearing, and being a software guy, you know, uh, by training myself, you hear the word dynamic um, policy. I mean, you're seeing these concepts and constructs in both in the architecture. So there's this need for policy-based fill in the blank, right? I mean, yeah, <laughs> provisioning, dynamic this, policy blank. So so how does that change the current? configurations of the architecture, um, or does it? Well, I, I, I think there are um, a couple of stages. In, in fact, kind of with the HP 3PAR product line, we realized this a, a very long time ago because you talk about policy-based, but there's actually a step further. That's the concept of autonomic management, where yes. the system is so, uh, so well um, integrated and uh, s uh, is able to, so well instrumented that it can determine its own policies, if you like, for uh, deploy, uh, deploying optimal storage. And that's where kind of HP with, uh, with three-part platform has really led the industry in autonomic management. But below that sits policy-based management where you know, there, is more, there are more alternatives and, and we fundamentally believe that... Uh, virtualization it, it, certainly helps element. that. Uh, ab absolutely. And I mean, we're, we're watching low-level virtualization as a trend on the bottom of the stack and up to program-level virtualization at the top of the stack. Kind yes. of, and everything in between, it's just like... It's like <laughs> it re really is moving forward. And I, and I think you will continue to see the development of that, whether it's uh, policy-based uh, um, uh, optimization of storage tiering, when that it gets extended out of the storage into uh, the server-based domain. Uh, that will be a, a next generation. So uh, I did an interview in 2008 with Chandra, Chandra Khan Patel, who's now running HP Labs, and it's, early back then they were talking the, the data center operating system. Um, so you guys are no stranger to this notion of software-defined uh, data center. In a sense, you guys have been doing a lot of R&D around it. So what's your take on that as it is now? Obviously VMware's putting it out there front and center uh, as, a, as a core emerging trend that they want to drive into, taking software-defined networking with this, uh, within the SIR deal, SDN, and moving into software-defined data center, which right now is just, I guess, positioning and, and, and direction. What do you guys see? What's the internal conversation amongst your group? Because you have all these elements. You've got the networking storage and, and servers all together. We've covered you guys on the storage side, uh, Moonshot, we know what's going on, a lot of optimization. So you got the tech. Can you share some color what's going on internally around this software vision? I mean, Bethany Mayer is on theCUBE saying that they're shipping an open flow, um, but seem like to be a feature. So, how is that shaking out? I, I don't think it's really a feature. I mean, all, all of the uh, kind of three major platform businesses within HP, whether it's server storage or networking, uh, are working to, together to drive kind of this automated policy-based approach that evolves into to being autonomic management. But we're also very heavily focused on the converged infrastructure management of IT as a service. How do you orchestrate and provision across this entire set of converged infrastructure to really uh, reduce complexity, eliminate costs to the benefit of customers. Awesome. Hey David, I wonder if we could talk a little bit about shift gears and talk a little bit about innovation. Uh, um, I was always, I'm always intrigued by sort of your path, your career path. Um, you joined 3PAR at a time, we kind of take for granted what 3PAR has done now. I mean, it's, it's quite amazing. You know, 3PAR and others, but 3PAR uniquely was going after that very you know, high-end, very demanding storage and the way in which it simplified you know, what was a very, very complex you know, set of processes. I um, mean, you and I have talked in the past about how difficult it was to actually achieve that, how much money you had to raise. I mean, you know, close to $100 million to actually get to the technology. I hate to uh, say it was $183 million. Was I, oh, okay, oh, oh, yeah, okay <laughs> you're right. When you add in uh, everything, right? Sure, so, but to get it off the ground, I mean, and now you're seeing a ton of innovation uh, around Flash. 
Um, and you're seeing some some takeouts a lot earlier. You know, people. So you, you had obviously a massive exit. You saw data domain with a massive exit, and you saw now you've seen, seen EMC make a move um, with Extreme IO without a product. Um, what do you think's happening there? Can you compare and contrast what you guys and others were doing with storage virtualization with what's happening with Flash, and you know the amount of capital is taking? Is it is it more? Is it less? Um, and the whole dynamic of maybe taking large companies, taking companies out earlier. You think that's a trend that we're seeing? Help us uh, get perspective on all that. Well, I, I think the whole evolution towards non-volatile memory in general is going to completely transform the storage market. Um, even the, the fundamental designs of, of systems are going to change. And, and the question probably at the top of mind for, for every one of the major systems vendors is, is their current software architecture, their storage software architecture, suitable to be adapted to this new non-volatile memory way. Uh, at HP, we clearly believe with technologies like 3 pass store once, leadership technologies in their own right, on modern storage architectures, we are very well positioned to be able to evolve those technologies, take full advantage of non-volatile memory solutions. There are others in the industry who evaluate that uh, question and you can see their answer. Uh, someone like e EMC says, well maybe VMAX and Ingenuity is not the right operating system to take advantage of uh, non-volatile memory. Um, IBM makes the same decision when they buy Texas Instruments. So it's really a statement of ha Te you know, Texas how- memories. Texas, Texas, Texas memory, yeah. Texas memory. <laughs> I, said Texas. I think you might have said Texas Instruments, but oh, that would have been Texas a Texas memory, yeah. sorry. <laughs> That's okay. But, but, um, but you know, it's, it's really an evaluation of are our software architectures too old to be able to take advantage of this massive disruptive trend that's occurring in the industry? And I think the answer from EMC and IBM is looking like, yes, they are too old. Whereas the answer from HP, we feel very firmly, is that we're in a very, very strong position to evolve 3PAR and our store once architectures to take advantage. Okay, so you would differentiate 3PAR, obviously you just did from some of the other guys, because the, the flash startups would all say no, we did, you know, good marketing, right? You got to put all these guys in a bucket, it's bolt on, you know, kind of like the marketing, they're going to yeah. take a page out of 3PAR and turn it around on you. Well, obviously, the, uh, we're going to let the market decide, but yeah. uh, you feel confident that, uh, that your architecture is suitable for these new modern flash devices and you can make them reliable. Yeah, we certainly do. I, I mean, you know, e compaction is a critical element of what you uh, need to deliver in order to optimize non-volatile memory environments. Uh, and uh, if you think about the technology assets uh, HP has, uh, with three-par leader and thin provisioning, with store once uh, integrating both deduplication and compression algorithms, we clearly have the modern technology basis to take advantage of, of, of uh, those solutions. Oh, I see. So I wonder if we could take that through. I mean, without you know divulging too much here, but but so all the the star flash startups are bringing things like compression and dedupe to their primary platforms. Do you see that going to primary in your portfolio? Oh, we, we certainly believe that as you evolve to non-volatile memory architectures, all of the wide range of compaction technologies will be critical to improving the efficiency. But I, I, I think there's also you know, a short-term and a kind of a medium-term uh, difference that people also have to consider, and that is you know, what is the future of flash versus other non-volatile memory technologies? And it really doesn't matter what those next generation are, uh, whether it's HP's Memristor or PCM or ST-RAM, uh, those fundamental technologies that are coming up have very, very di different characteristics from NAND. And even then, some of these flash-based startups will have to make significant changes to take advantage uh, of those new non-volatile memory technologies as they come on board. So what do you make of, uh, of VMware's new CEO, right? A uh, head-to-head uh, -head competitor and now a partner. <laughs> Um, have you, well, have I think you he was a partner first at Intel, <laughs> yeah, and he's yeah. the partner again at VMware, <laughs> so we feel very comfortable. <laughs> so, uh, so that's kind of an interesting dynamic, and of course we've always said in theCUBE, VMware's not going to, or EMC's not going to sub-optimize VMware to get a competitive advantage with EMC, because the potential for VMware is much, much larger from a market valuation standpoint. But um, there's still an interesting dynamic, and do you think it marks uh, you know, a change in, in the way in which this industry is, is evolving? Or is it just a you know, management swap? No, I think, I think uh, VMware has, has kind of uh, managed to create itself more than those uh, kind of uh, valuable properties, if you like, in the uh, IT industry uh, by maintaining a, a level, level playing field uh, between different uh, vendors. I think uh, 
that's in its best interest to maintain uh, moving forward. And I think there's every evidence that uh, they will maintain that position. Uh, and we will continue to partner with them in critical areas of future development that we think can improve kind of customers' costs, their efficiency, reduce their complexity, et cetera. Yeah, you missed it yesterday. It was interesting. They had the CEO panel up there. And and Gelsinger was saying his new best friend was Tom Georgians and of course Michael Dell, and it was, it was good humor. And, uh, and we had uh, Pat Gelsinger on theCUBE today, and obviously, you know, very committed yes. to the community. And, uh, but I think this, the, the VMware evolution uh, is, is really uh, going to play a, a very heavy part. In fact, the hypervisor evolution overall in this new generation of will finally there be an alternative model of storage where you can get enterprise storage arrays without the array, uh, i.e. can you use virtual storage appliances like our new store virtual VSA that uh, we uh, kind of introduced or, or rather reintroduced based on left-hand technology where you have the benefit of creating uh, on industry standard hardware of any variety, whether it's HP, Dell, IBM, Lenovo, uh, fundamental rich storage services uh, like uh, disaster recovery, thin provisioning, uh, out of existing equipment, uh, completely hardware agnostic, but also, very importantly, hypervisor agnostic, uh, because our new store virtual, virtual storage appliances uh, work in both VMware and Hyper-V environments, and they work at the same time, i.e. a heterogeneous environment. So you can literally have mixed environments, but single cluster storage-based solutions around store virtual VSA. And the reason why I think that's important is that I saw um, recently some data, I believe it was from an IDC study on uh, storage and uh, server virtualization trends, and it said within uh, 18 to 24 months, over 80% of people will expect to have uh, more than one hypervisor in their environment, a heterogeneous hypervisor solution. Uh, and that's why I think uh, HP's position in this new world of virtual storage appliances where we support multiple hypervisors is really a, a strong position. In well, the so that brings up an interesting point because Pat Kelsinger yesterday said uh, in his keynote, we're at 60% you know, applications virtualized today on Intel servers, where you know, the goal is to get to 90%. Yeah. That says that you really got to take away the complexity. I mean, 60% was relatively easy compared to all the uh, you know, ERP applications and Oracle database applications that now have to get virtualized. Um, and presumably it would be easier if you just had one hypervisor. <laughs> but that's not going to happen. So HP's role, or one of your roles, is to abstract that complexity across hypervisors. That's how you add value beyond the hypervisor. And we intend to be the leader in that in storage providing that abstraction layer for those people who want software and the architectures. And there are a lot of people who do. I mean, we have a, a store virtual VSA entire booth uh, at VMworld here today. And the reason we have there is there's such interest after our launch and it's kind of been packed out. Uh, effectively, you know, there are a wide variety of customers who are interested. People who are small to medium sized businesses who, who want to have simple infrastructure, maybe they they just have a server environment, they want to run a, a, a virtual machine environment and co-locate applications, virtualized applications running side by side with their storage services. Perfect solution for that. They can choose their server vendor. They can use existing hardware. Remote offices and branch offices of large scale enterprises where again, they really want simplicity. They don't want a, a separate storage device uh, uh, and then the server device to run their applications and storage networking between them. They can collapse it all down into a single infrastructure using store virtual VSA, get disaster recovery solutions, thin provisioning. And then interestingly, there is a clear move for uh, many cloud vendors to look at hardware agnostic environments where they can build scale out architectures and leverage virtual storage appliances in one or more hypervisors to deliver their services. And so we think in those three different segments, we really have a leadership position with, uh, with our left hand uh, heritage uh, now in store virtual VSA. Yeah, all designed to keep removing those layers of complexity, yeah. which is what you got to do to get growth you know, going. So, yeah. All right, David, well, thanks very much. We really appreciate your time and coming on theCUBE, always a great guest. Indeed, and, uh, thanks, Dave. Really Thank you very time. much. Okay, we're, we'll be right back with our next guest right after this break.